thank you all for coming. I'm Jan, and I would like to talk a bit about microservices and how to split your further monolithic uh, project. I work at Chomex as a part of our CMS team, and I will use that CMS as an example about why, when, and how to make that split. For that, I would like to talk just a bit about microservices, and then I turn out my projector. Okay. We stream videos on demand mostly to Africa and some EU countries, and we, our platform is quite fond of microservices. And our CMS is a platform in Django where our content team can enter some uh, metadata about uploaded movies. It's title, description, images, stuff like that. And as we were writing that platform and the CMS, we actually decided that we do not want to split that at the beginning. Because in Django it could be quite convenient to it's very easy, basically, to make some administration. You write your data model, you write like 10 lines of Django admin, and it's already doing what you want. And it's quite convenient to make your API endpoints uh, with Django also, so you can use it. the data model, you can uh, use Django ORM, maybe some common methods, but you have to be sort of very there, not to match them up too much together not to draw them in a thousand mixins. Because if you do so, it would be borderline impossible to make that bit later. You will end up with a mess of the code just on the multiple places. And as was said on another conference, if you can build a well structured monolith, what makes you think microservices is the answer, right? Because it's still the same as. And yet we felt that it's in some time it stopped being convenient for us. For the first, uh, we felt that our Postgre stopped to perform uh, real well because we ended up with our movies having lots of related objects on it. Next two reasons are sort of tied together. When your main entry to your system are users filling lots and lots of form, and there are, there are a lot, it, they will pretty quickly find, find some edge case. You think you put all the restriction, you type check it all, you never do. You're not able to. And if it would be just the data management, it would be fine. They will write to you, you find a wrong, a wrong movie, fix it in like 10, 15 minutes, later put some restriction. But where you, when your API is also in the same system, you probably have yourself a platform wide outage. Also, as that code bloats, you are constantly in each other way with your team. There are tons of marriage conflict, maybe something is already on staging but didn't pass the QA, so you have to either cherry pick or postpone the deploy. So for that, we decided it's time for us to split from Django and started to thinking about XTech. We went with Falcon as our API framework. Quite light, powerful, easy to write, great thing. We use Elasticsearch as our database and varnish for routing and caching. I would like to touch that a bit on the end of my talk. Just a side note, caching can be quite important for us because in peak hour, just one of our microservices serve about 8 million requests from cache. So about that Falcon, when we thought that we want to split from Django, we didn't felt the need to stay with Python at all. We also tried Golang because those two languages at the time had quite powerful L6 search libraries, which wasn't standard in 2016. And write some endpoints, run a benchmark, and results with Go actually blew my mind and still does. It's 20 times quicker. Falcon also great, 10 times quicker, but it's a bit overshadowed, right? And yet we went with that Falcon. The reason for that is simple. Personally, I suck at Golang. And with Falcon, we were there pretty quickly. It was quite a joy to write it. With Go, it felt heavy-handed, it took a long time, and to migrate the whole service would be endless until we get good, which didn't seem near. So yeah, we went with Falcon. I mentioned that our Postgre 
didn't perform well, very well, but we only have some, somehow about 200,000 movies and movies with all of its images, its description, we'll call that an asset. And that's not a large number. Postgre could handle it pretty fine, unless you see our data model. <laughs> In the middle, you can see that asset, that top structure. There are some images on the right end, some contract on the left. And from your APIs, you actually want to return that asset as a one object. So front end can ask only once. Postgre would make lots and lots of joints of that, somewhere around 100 for one front-end request. So we end up with like 32 million related objects to one asset, approximately 150 to one video. And if someone is to write me, okay, this asset doesn't have a description, it didn't show at all, I don't actually want to go to this. What I would much like to do is take a look just at JSON. It's how Elastic uh, store data. I can find it more quickly. Also, performance got better like n times, uh, eight times on some endpoints. And you get quite powerful full text, which came in handy. So yeah, that would be Elasticsearch. I think we have our text set completed, so let's get to migrating it. It can be quite a headache, of course. And I would like to go to through some common obstacles that you might encounter during rewriting it. First thing would be cache invalidation because very scarce there is always a problem. We want to keep Postgre as our right authority to use in Django still, but we want to serve our clients from Elasticsearch. So how to do it when someone <coughs> from content team enters new asset or just update its typo in existing one? We would want to stream that change to Elasticsearch and drop cache on that one object. We made a plan and then we decided that, well, we are not the news. We are not, we do not need the change in seconds. Instead, what we did is we wrote a Python script that takes Postgre, assembled that asset and feed Elasticsearch index with it, slap some alias on it, we serve clients with that alias. This happened every 30 minutes, so half an hour later, new indexes made, aliases are swapped, then we can drop caches with some fuzziness, so drop will not hit us that hard. Next, next thing is, this migration can take some serious time. I split it my second microservice from CMS as my first task at Showmax, like on my fourth day or so, and it took between two and two and a half months. Quite a lot of time. Would be quicker now because I know the system much better, but still a decent amount it would take still. And during the whole the time, your production your product guy doesn't let you sleep because he really shouldn't. Instead, he comes with new feature requests and during that month or two months, you have to implement it twice to your soon to be dead system and to your to be microservice. And it wouldn't be that code because nobody's that lucky, right? And if we were still a monolithic service, deploys are quite easy. Let's say that previously mentioned feature requests would need some data model change. Okay, then I change my model, I deploy it, someone review it, I'm fine. Now I have to change my model, change that script that feed Elastic, change Elastic search models, then microservices, maybe even some middleware. So I have to make a plan for every deploy bigger, which is usually pretty straightforward, but what I think is slightly worse is it's now multiple code reviews and some context may be lost because I need to tell my colleagues, okay, you should review this, then this, then this. And I think there is quite a chance that they can over overlook something, but only thing how I think we can tackle this is microservices in monorepo because you will still need to deploy all of those services, but your peer that is reviewing it, have it all in one context. And the last thing that you might think about is routing. It's not really an obstacle because it's pretty straightforward, but I, what I think is worth to mention, your front-end guys should never be, be forced to change the code just because you are switching technologies. 
they, of course, they shouldn't change their parameters or recall it. They, they shouldn't even change their URL, and it's pretty simple to do so, right? You just change your VCL, point it to a different Docker, you're done. Your front-end guys will never know, but you still want to break to them, right? And with this, let's say we have it written, and we are in the QA phase. I am signed myself from a ticket, say, you do you QA, go to a cafe, and then someone came and asked me an inevitable question. What can break? Well, <laughs> all of it, because I just wrote it. And I didn't think that we are able to QA this in a reasonable time until my colleague wrote what became this in like three hours. Uh, we call it log replay, it downloads your logs from Kibana and replaces them against your locally running instance of this microservice. Then you can compare latencies, but much more importantly, the last column, is it different? Compare status code and body over response, is it not different? Great. So with this, we discovered our bugs pretty quickly, fixed them, went to production. Pardon. So, did, after we went to production, did we get anything out of it instead of the service being 18 times quicker? Well, still yes, because... Oh, I just want to mention the last thing, sorry. Uh, good news, because we are now thinking about how to generalize this tool enough to make it one of our open source projects. It's currently quite a lot of work to generalize it. But, okay, we are in production, we are quicker, but is there more? I can easily micromanage my resources because each of our microservices takes different amount of requests. One of those is responsible of returning details uh, of that asset, so user browsing the catalog, it can get uh, called quite a lot. Second one, it can interplay only when someone actually clicks the play, so a lot, le lot less request. And I can accommodate to that with my containers. It's easier also to test in the back. Is there anyone wor working uh, regularly with Django? Okay, did you try to write uh, some integrational or functional tests to it? Yeah. Is it pain? It's incredibly painful experience to me. Okay, we have to talk later. <laughs> it's also easier to debug, uh, and by that I mean know your code is doing just one thing. Maybe if you split it correctly in the beginning. Maybe in tons of different contexts, but it's still just one thing. So if something broke, you know much better where to look. Also, it's easier to migrate your data, because uh, with Django, when you run some migration, you deploy it. Okay, migration is deployed, the first container is up, but all of your other containers doesn't know anything about that change. So they can easily break, you have to stop that containers, or do like free deploys, which is not really convenient. But with Elasticsearch, you just feed that script, and it's really much easier for me. And let's start waiting for deployable master. By that, I mean that there are less merge conflicts, because all of my colleagues are working on all of those services. So yeah, I think even in production, we got much better performance. And still, I think it's worth the wait to wait for your platform to mature. Don't do it from the beginning, because you even have quite hectic tempo at the start. And it's much more convenient to do it in that one context. But then it might not be so convenient anymore. And then split it. Do what your platform wants, not do it for the sake of doing it. I think that's all I wanted to say. If you have any questions, please make so. Uh, or you can get me up in the halls for a few more hours. You can write me a mail. Of if you want to mo know more about our open source services or how we do things, there is a link to our tag blog. Thank you. No, 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 we have, uh, oh, sorry, repeat the question. Because we find it difficult to use the primary data store, we use multiple secondary 
It is, it is. Oh, uh, I, I thought I mentioned it, maybe I forgot because this is my first talk and I'm really nervous. Uh, we use Postgres still as a write authority and each half an hour we take Postgres and dump Elasticsearch index out of it. So, write authority is still Postgres because like even before a year it would still be possible for Elasticsearch uh, to lose some data. Elasticsearch 2.0 still did it quite frequently. So yeah, it's not our main data store, it's just what we serve clients with. And do you uh, really index it like on a daily basis or how is the user Every half an hour, half because uh, that's how we cache. Because those data can change for half an hour, so why not cache for half an hour, right? You had a second one? I have the same question. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> Uh, about it, Elastic Church, we actually think about how to stream those changes frequently and drop the single cache object. We have all the tooling, but it's more like what would be more cool than what, would we, uh, what do we need? We never actually need this. So, if there is something else, thank you. Have a nice day.